Hello, and thank you for joining me, Eric Chu with Two Homes and Intero. And our special guest today is Daniel Dietrich, um, an expert in many things, including title, as well as uh, the local propositions, real estate propositions. Um, thank you for joining me today, Daniel. Thanks a lot for having me, Eric. So just a brief overview of our webinar today. Daniel and I will be talking about Proposition 19 um, and how that affects um, homeowners here in California. And the main uh, topic about Proposition 19 is keeping your low property tax basis when you sell your primary residence and stay within California. First, we will talk about kind of the history and background of the different propositions that affect property tax in California, according, um, starting with Proposition 13. And we'll also talk about Proposition 60 and 90, which some of you may be familiar with and some might not be as familiar with, just to give a little bit of background about Proposition 19. And then at the end, we will also discuss um, some other traits of Proposition 19 that affect um, property tax with inherited properties and and investment properties that on, on that front that are not primary residences, which is a, a secondary um, topic that we will cover in the future, but we'll touch on it briefly during this webinar as well. So starting off, um, if anyone has any questions, please um, ask them either in the chat or the Q&A, and we will um, get to them when we have a, a moment during the presentation. Um, and I think let's start with what is Proposition 13? Okay, well, great, great question. And uh, thanks again for having me. Uh, a lot of what we're going to be discussing today, I was fortunate enough to take part of a training that involved the Santa Clara County Assessor's Office and all the local title companies. And so a lot of the information that we'll be covering today uh, will, will be from the viewpoint of a seller or buyer and how it will affect their escrow or, or title transaction when they decide to, you know, move residences for whatever reason. Um, mainly, like Eric mentioned, we're going to discuss primary ownership and and what we're seeing as a trend. But he's absolutely correct that you can't really address uh, the new changes to transactions in 2021 without going all the way back into history, into the late 70s, when a proposition called Prop 13 was passed. And, and many attribute Prop 13 as the reason why um, that local uh, buyers of real estate at that time were able to maintain a low cost basis. Um, prior to uh, 1978, when Prop 13 was passed, we had an epidemic of senior citizens and those who, for whatever reason, when they purchased their homes, the yearly increase in value as values started to get very expensive uh, in the 70s in California was forcing homeowners to have to sell properties or lose their properties because they could no longer afford the property tax payments. And that's why Prop 13 was established. As a result, um, people ask this question quite a bit uh, when they're in an escrow, uh, which is, oh, well, I have Prop 13 and, and you know I'm, I'm protected. Uh, truth of the matter is anyone who buys a property in California has Prop 13 status. Uh, it essentially means whenever you buy, that will be your initial cost basis. And then that cost basis uh, is used to determine all sorts of things um, that, that get applied during your escrow. Um, one of those obviously is that potential for capital gains. Um, there are some, and Eric can speak to this, some exemptions or amounts that you can take um, through different laws, but Prop 13 is sort of that freezing in time of your original purchase with a minimal percentage cap per year that you can be reassessed. And then us in the escrow and title industry, we're using that data, uh, obviously, to do things called prorations, right? So we, we have to attribute what your current property tax payment would be all the way up to the very point uh, that you sell your property, and then it becomes the buyer's responsibility. And this is a result of debits and credits that happen in your transaction uh, when you're a home seller. Now, people 
in the 80s had the desire to maybe move residences. And as a result of that, we had something called Prop 60 that was initiated. And what Prop 60 is the ability to transfer that low property tax basis through Prop 13, as long as it was a primary residence of equal or lesser value to a new property. So let's, let's say that I, go ahead, Eric. Let me, let's step back and just quickly summarize Prop 13. So essentially, um, from when you purchase the property, um, that assessed value will be based on the purchase price um, at any given point. So even if you bought a property this year in 2021, um, Proposition 13 applies because your ta tax basis of assessed value will be the purchase price. And then there is a cap, like Daniel mentioned, um, on how much it can go up every year, um, which currently is 2%. Um, there's also special assessments, right? So for like uh, schools and, and various other um, local um, taxes that you can, um, that can be determined that will also affect the property tax, but the basis of, of, of it will be when you purchased it, um, whether it be now in 2021, or if you're lucky back in the seventies or even before that. Um, and so, yeah, Daniel's now talking about if, if you sold or you want in the eighties, you wanted to sell, what, what would you do? Because you have such a great property tax basis, um, you're almost trapped in your home, right? So go ahead, Daniel, sorry for interrupting. Thank you, that, that's exactly right. And so uh, at that time, a new proposition called Prop 60 was passed by the voters of California. And what that allowed you to do, and I'll give you a scenario, perhaps you're in a, a uh, two-story, four-bedroom, two-bath home. And in 1988, um, you may, uh, it may be worth 800,000. That'd be a nice house in 1988, right, Eric? Yeah. Uh, but when you purchased it originally uh, in the 60s or early 70s, maybe you only paid 60,000 or you know 100,000 for that property. So a as a result, um, you may have a lifestyle change. Maybe you no longer could live in a two-story home and you needed a one-story home, but you wanted to maintain that basis. Prop 60 allows you or did allow you as long as the equal or lesser value with some slight variations, but equal or lesser value to transfer your primary tax basis to that new property. And you could do that once in your lifetime. And within the county, right? And it, that was only within the county that you currently live, which is exactly why Prop 90, which is sort of an addition to Prop 60 was created because some homeowners said, well, I don't want to live here anymore. I have reasons where I need to live to in another county. Maybe I need to move from San Mateo to Santa Clara. Maybe I need to live from Alameda to San Diego. And as a result, Prop 90 was created where only participating counties gave you the right, typically more expensive metro city uh, counties, but th that gave you the right to transfer that basis. But it was limited and when Prop 90, which effectively is completely changed now by Prop 19, uh, ended up with about 10 participating counties. Like I said, most, most of those counties, with some rare exceptions, were typically more expensive counties. And that kind of brings us to present day uh, to the 2020 election, where the California uh, voters uh, voted in uh, to uh, action Prop 19, which I have a slide and we're gonna go over in a little bit, but Prop 19 is a major change in your uh, escrow and, and title transactions uh, because new choices uh, have opened up. And when I say new choices have opened up and we get lots of questions, I think that's a reason why the county assessor actually looked to the title industry as a good advocate uh, for not only educating the real estate professionals, but also the general homeowners as to where to go to get their questions answered. Once again, I work in the title industry. I am not a CPA. I am not an attorney. I am not the local assessor. However, because we are involved with the forms, we are involved in the process, we're a great place with your realtor to get guidance as to where to go to get your questions answered so that you are educated before you continue on with your real estate transaction. So yeah, are you ready? If, yes, and if, if you have any further questions on the title part, on the real estate part, and just getting advice, like Daniel said, on where to look, um, we can provide those resources and help guide you in the right direction so you're not um, lost trying to find um, the answers. And yeah, I would just wanna 
reiterate what Daniel said, we are not um, the assessor, right? So we don't work for the counties um, and we're not um, accountants or tax professionals either. So um, please uh, please um, work with your, your tax professional, right? Um, about this and also um, the um, assessors, right? The county assessors, which will determine your um, property taxes. Let's take a look at what we have here with Prop 19 and what it means and how it may have changed uh, the future of what you plan to do with your real estate. So uh, effective April 1st of this year, Prop 19 allowed homeowners who are 55 or older, uh, those with severe disabilities, those that may have been a victim of a wildfire or a natural disaster, to transfer their tax property tax assessments anywhere within the state of California to a primary residence of equal uh, or lesser value with no increase or a more expensive primary residence with an upward adjustment as long as it's within two years of the sale of the original primary residence. So uh, let me remind you, Prop 60, Prop 90 was only ever allowed to equal or lesser value. So right off the bat, the fact that you can now buy a property that is actually more expensive uh, and only pay the difference. And I'll give an example. Someone pays 100,000 for a property. Uh, the property is now worth 1.1, right? The property they wanna buy is worth 1.2. Under Prop 6090, that was not necessarily allowed, but under Prop 19, you can now do that knowing that you will only be paying an increase on property taxes on that difference. In that example, on the 100,000 at basically one and a quarter percent, which is something you would verify with your local assessor. So a small amount would allow you to then transfer to a larger or more expensive property. And of course, uh, if it's equal or lesser value, there will be absolutely no change. Key here is 55 or older upon the time of sale of the primary residence, your relinquished property. Now, another thing that has changed is where? In the past, Eric, right? You could only transfer to Los Angeles. You could only transfer to San Mateo. You could not transfer to say Napa. You could not transfer to Sacramento. In general, you could not transfer to many places that would actually be considered more affordable. Under Prop 19, every county in California participates. Well, let me repeat that because that is a huge reason why we are seeing so many more transactions in 2021 than years prior is that many people 55 and older are now able to move anywhere in the state yep. and maintain their low property tax basis as long as they qualify by being 55 or older and that it's a primary residence. Yeah, it, I, go, ahead. go ahead. Yeah, I just wanna reiterate what Daniel said. So it, Proposition 19 essentially um, replaces um, 60 and 90. So they're now um, sunsetted and Proposition 19 applies to the entire state of California. And um, so any county, you can move between any county within California. If you meet these eligibility um, requirements, so one of them is being 55 or older. Some of the other ones are if you're a wildfire victim, um, you have severe disabilities. Um, I we would recommend you check with the um, assessor's office on, on the requirements for those if you're not um, 55 and you're using one of the other um, eligibility um, metrics there. And the other huge difference, I just wanna repeat what Daniel was saying, is that previously, um, if you were in a county that participated, you could only um, move your primary residence from an equal or lesser value um, as a general guideline. And now with Proposition 19, um, the value of your, your relinquished property, the property that you sold your primary residence to the new property, it, it, um, you do not, you're not restricted on, on, the, on the new price. And, you will pay the difference. And we will have slides to go over um, another example. Daniel briefly went over one just now, but we'll have a concrete um, slide example that we can uh, cover as well. And I'll repeat again, if you have any further questions, we can have, you can reach out to us and we can uh, guide you uh, where to look. I, I wanna point out the one other thing, and this is all, this is very exciting stuff that's happened. It's really changed um, sort of the landscape of, of real estate here in our state of California. But it also went from one time. So in the past, you only had one chance to get it right. 
and that was it once in your lifetime. Now any eligible homeowner can do uh, their transfer up to three times. So even if you had in the past already done a Prop 60 or Prop 90 transfer, uh, you would have an additional two more times that prior to this law passing, you could now take advantage of with these new terms, as well as if you haven't done it at all yet, you have three chances. So a lot of people would be a little you know, scared to make a decision like this because if they got it wrong, that was it. They, they could only move it the one time. Three, three tries is pretty good. You're, you're probably going to find the right ideal property for your long-term home ownership needs if you have three chances to do so. So I'm going to go to the next slide. And I, I believe that uh, there is a, uh, like, like Eric said, an, an example here. Um, so currently, you have a, we have another slide too, right, Daniel? Later that has a. Uh, we can house. we can we can go into that from the assessor's uh, website. Yeah, that the Larry Stone's office has a great example uh, that which I can pull up from this presentation. Okay. Um, so so currently, as soon as residents move to a new home after living in their own old home for a long time, their property tax increases by quite a bit, and this is the issue that Prop 19 seeks to address. Prop 19 allows the homeowners that are 55 or older to transfer their taxable value of their old house to a new home, like we mentioned. Now, this is designed to encourage seniors to enter into the marketplace. Personally, I'm almost getting towards 55, so I don't really like being considered a senior, but you know, 55 is that age where you have this ability. And so why, um, why this is so important for folks to understand is, when you do work with a professional like Eric to list your home, or you take uh, my company into account to uh, open an escrow or title account, there are other additional steps. Knowing, talking to the assessors, making sure you understand clearly, I'm selling here at this date, I'm buying here at that date. Also, Eric, right? Do you have to buy first or sell first? These are questions that we get asked all the time. Uh, the answer is, it doesn't matter which leg happens first, as long as both transactions are within the two years, and that at the time of the sale of the primary residence with the low basis, that one of the homeowners is 55 years of age. Yep. And that, or, older. That's a, or older. Yeah, you can be older. We get that question quite a bit. And so we have to refer then people to their, their professionals in the local county so they can confirm that. All right, and you would, if you'd like, um, take it from here. I'll bring up that example sure. uh, that from Larry Stone's house while, while you talk to the folks. Yeah, so the I'll, I'll briefly touch that on that. We'll, we'll remind everyone that we will go um, and discuss some of the, the um, not so positive aspects of Property 19, which are for inherited um, property. So previously, um, the property tax basis could be transferred to heirs. Um, and now with property 19, um, the property will be reassessed. Um, a, a rental investment property that's, that's um, um, given to an heir. So, so for example, um, a um, mom and dad gave it to one of their kids, the, the rental property. Um, the property tax basis will not be reassessed at the current market rate um, at the time of that transfer. Whereas in the past, there were ways to keep that low property tax basis. Um, there are exceptions. Um, so if, um, if the, the heir, um, if the heir makes it their primary residence, then it is potentially possible um, to keep that low property tax basis. But um, once again, um, feel free to reach out to us and we can go into more detail um, about how this specifically applies um, to your situation. And in addition, there are other um, tax um, implications to consider as well, like stepped up bases, um, 1031 exchanges, right? Um, with the capital gain side as well. So it's not just the property taxes, there's also capital gains taxes to consider um, on, on properties. And we can also add, um, refer you to tax professionals as well. If you do not have your own tax professional CPA to um, advise you on that. Um, so, so, so Eric, if, if I can interrupt, you wanted an example. This came from the Santa Clara County Assessor's uh, presentation that was done with the local title companies. And um, 
here's an example one. So we have the taxable value you can see here at 300,000, a sales price of 900,000, right? And the replacement home, um, right, is 700,000. So they step down in this situation, so to speak, but their new taxable value is uh, that 300,000. So nothing changes in that scenario. So here's another example. So let me just quickly just repeat. I, I just want to reiterate what Daniel said. So if you are downsizing in price, so you sold your property for for a, a given amount, and you buy the new primary residence at a lower price, then you you simply keep your property tax basis from your first property, right? And so that's, that's in this correct. case, in this case, the new purchase size of seven hundred thousand, if that was assessed at seven hundred thousand, your property tax bill. Would be significantly higher than your first house, right? Even though um, it's sold for less than than uh, your 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 first house, because your property tax basis was different from your market value of your property. So if you're going from a higher value to a lower value um, from what you property you sold to what you bought, then you just simply keep your old property tax basis, which is a great thing. Like you just keep that little basis. So Daniel's now going to go into an example of if you want to upgrade and buy a more expensive property than the one you sold. And that's now with property 19, that's not possible, which was not possible in the past from the previous proposition. That, that, that's exactly correct. And, and we are starting to see these transactions more and more in the, in the, in the title companies. Um, so it, it's interesting because at first I kind of wondered, well, how many people will take advantage? And it turns out quite a few actually are taking advantage. So in example two, um, if the market value of the replacement residence is more than the market value of the original, then the excess will be added to the taxable value transferred to market value. Original value, 300,000. Original market value upon sale, 900,000. However, the replacement mar market value in this scenario is 1.4. Lots of reasons why people have been getting larger homes, more privacy, larger space, especially during the pandemic. So this has been a popular option. Uh, since the market value of the replacement is 500000 more than the original market value, an adjustment to the transferred taxable value is made to the add the difference in value. Therefore, the taxable value of the replacement will be 800000 which is simply 300000 plus 500000 as opposed to it being based on $1.4 million. So you're getting a property tax rate that's almost, you know, a little more than um, half, uh, 40 something percent discount, as opposed to if you just purchased a $1.4 million house. And that's making a lot of people make a lot of decisions right now, because it's something that they can actually uh, see themselves doing and afford. Now, um, Eric, I, I know we're running short on time. We're getting down to the last five minutes of your presentation. And I know you wanted me to discuss um, the, the maybe less positive aspects. You know, everyone's different. Everyone's situations are different. Uh, in, in regards to uh, how it affects uh, investment property in transferring uh, basis. So in the past, we had something called Prop 58 and Prop 193. And what those uh, propositions, and we had plenty of escrows where people would sell their properties to their children or even grandchildren. That allowed um, them to do so, even though it was going to maintain an investment property. There was some limitations. There was an amount that uh, basically could uh, a cap amount of transferable value per person, right? Per transferee. Uh, but now under, and I'll, I'll bring it up, under Prop 19, that has been altered. And so you'll notice here on the initial slide, we, we talked about April 1st, as of February 16th of 2021, it requires that inherited homes that are not used as a principal residence, such as second homes or rentals, be reassessed at market value when transferred to children or grandchildren, right? So it gives a, a much better example of what that means to people that own multiple properties as rentals. Prop 19 changes tax reassessments on inherited properties. So currently under Prop 58 and 193, which are no longer, now that this is in effect, um, they've been sunsetted, primary residential homes are not reassessed when transferred to heirs. 
So you can still transfer primary residential homes, right? So any property that is benefiting from low tax rates created by Prop 13 would continue to benefit if a parent passes the property to a child or grandchild. Rental properties or vacation homes um, could in the past be transferred to a parent or grandchild with a 1 million tax basis exemption. That was the past. Under 19, which is now in effect, it makes it no longer possible for inherited homes to maintain the same low property tax rate enjoyed by uh, prior to the inheritance if the heir does not make it a primary residence. So Eric, I think you alluded to this. It isn't that it's not possible, it's that there are some limitations yeah. and the new owner must use it as a primary, okay? Yep. That was not the case in the past. In the past, you could transfer a rental to an heir, keep it as a rental as long as it was within that 1 million basis exemption allowance, right? Children now who inherit their parents' homes but only intend to keep it as a second home or rent it out would see a big increase in property taxes under Prop 19. Further, when the inherited property use, is used as a re recipient's principal residence, but has a market value of 1 million or more than the property's taxable value, an upward adjustment could occur. And so what does that mean? Essentially, it means um, that it isn't impossible to transfer properties, provided that your heir is going to use it as a home primary. that they primary, that's primary. right, gonna live in it. And on top of that, let's, um, there is a limit of up to 1 million. So in that example, where there was the 300,000 for the original property, right? That they paid. And then you add 1 million, that would be, that's the current limits allow. That would make it 1.3 and that that heir would live in as a primary, that can be done. However, every dollar above 1.3, there would be that upward adjustment. So if the property is worth 2 million, which is not an uncommon number in Silicon Valley, um, you know, there would be a $700,000 difference that the assessor could potentially reassess. And that has made a lot of, People uh, look at investment property a little differently uh, in the Valley, and we've seen an increased amount of transactions specifically with non-owner properties, I would say over the last two years as a result of some of these changes. So I hope I went over a lot. I hope I helped answer, or at least I started some um, communication. Yeah. That will encourage your, uh, your viewers and your clients to reach out to the right professionals. We're yeah. here on the escrow and title side to help you in any way that we can. And I just appreciate you having me here today, uh, Eric. If there's anything else that you'd like me to talk about, please let me know. All right, yeah, thank you um, for joining uh, myself and Daniel. It, like Daniel said, if anyone, if you have a question, please feel free to reach out to myself or Daniel. Um, and we will happy to guide you in the right direction to get your questions answered. Um, thanks again for, for joining for joining me and I'm um, looking forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Thanks guys, bye. Bye.